G'day. A few videos ago I did a, uh, a clip on recovering from some problems I had making up uh, some worm gearing and uh, one of the viewers, uh, Mech Electro, spotted a, a, tool, make, a tool holder that I'd made up and wanted a few more details and so this video is, is basically making a couple of those and uh, hopefully that'll be enough information but if more is needed, well, please, uh, please ask some questions. Remember too, there's a lot of interesting stuff in the, well, I think interesting stuff, in the back catalogue. So if you're new to the channel, please uh, have a look at that. You might find something there that uh, is of interest to you. My tool holders are a, a BXA size, uh, and that's uh, 5 8 16 millimeters through there. So my tool holder is going to be 16 millimeters, so I get a, a, a nice fit there uh, and as much as much depth as I can. I need it a little bit wider. The hole for the for the tool steel, I want to put that as close as I can to the tool post for, for extra rigidity, but I want to leave enough material so that when the screws clamp down, it's clamping on material and not on free space. Now here I've done uh, a hole and then milled that away. Uh, but there are other ways to doing that. So to start with, I'm going to take my material down to 16. Uh, I think I've got some black bar which is about 20 wide, so I'll, I'll just do a minor clean up on that. I've taken my blanks down to size, cleaned them up on all the faces. I've got my uh, 16 millimeter there to sit in my tool holder. I've just done a minimum clean up on the sides there just to, to give me something to work with. I've then scrubbed a, a line halfway along and that's going to be the height of my um, tool bit. It doesn't, uh, doesn't need to be halfway, this one's actually a little bit lower than that. I think that's probably more because of the size grub screws I had. But that's what I've done there. Now, I made these in a difficult way in that I drilled a hole through there before I machined that off so I could use a square brooch this one to put that hole in there. In fact I would have done it from this side okay, and just push that through to get the square hole. Now if you've got a square brooch this is actually the easiest way to get a nice square hole but if you're um, lacking in a square brooch what you're going to have to do to, to form that square hole is basically round hole and needle file in the corners just to take those out. It shouldn't take too long because it's only a, a short hole. So what I'm going to do here, one of these I'm going to make up as a, as a quarter inch um, holder and so I'm going to drill that hole. Uh, the other one I'm going to be filing and so I'll, I'll just machine that back, put some clearance in there so I can get in there and file that hole easily. Okay, so if you're doing something with a brooch, it's easier to, to, to drill the hole, put the brooch in, then machine the material off. If you're doing something with a file, it's probably easier to machine the material off, then put the hole in. Question of proportions. So this is, this is the, the, the plan. Uh, these are based off dimensions of my tool holder, which is in, in black here. And so the distance from the grub screws to the edge of the socket six and a half uh, and then I put on an extra two and a half because of the uh, diameter of the tip of the grub screw and so that gets me the nine here. That 4.5 diameter nine is approximately the, the, the across the tip distance for the, um, uh, the tool steel that's going to go in there. Now what that means is that if you're putting in some 3 16 tool steel, which one of these is, um, that doesn't have to be 9, uh, that comes down by a millimetre or two. Or, sorry, the diameter doesn't have to be 9, the, the radius comes down by a millimetre, I think. Um, could be a bit more. But it means you can have that, the centre of that uh, tool steel closer into the tool post which is a good idea because if you can imagine in an extreme situation if you have your your tool out here there's a lot of um, lever arm there to to um, rattle your tool and all that sort of thing you get more rigidity the closer you are so if you're starting off and you don't know what sizes you're going to do then drill some holes uh, and um, 
you know, make an assumption. But if you know what size these are going to be, you can do a little bit of work and, and, and reduce your overhang. What that'll mean, of course, is on the one that I use for the, uh, the 3 16th, and I've actually got them labelled, um, it means I'll probably be able to take a little bit of a skim off the top of the, you know, the, which will be the outside surface of, of that holder. I've set up to drill the holes through the blanks. Because of the length, I'm not going to get one drill bit that's going to go all the way through there. Well, I could if I had a long series drill, uh, but for, for it's, it's easier to, to do one drill coming into about half and another coming to about half. The nice thing is that they meet up in the middle. The error deviation from path is, is probably going to be half what it would be if you drilled all the way through. And if you pick a, a, a reasonable size drill for your pilot hole, a reasonable as in not too big, then when you come through with your main drill, there might be a slight step there, which you might feel, but um, it'll, it'll be pretty smooth. One thing I should point out here too, um, I'm drilling this in my four-jaw chuck, simply because that's a, an easy way to make sure that that is sort of square to the table in both directions. I started out balancing this on the on three points, on the three pins from the uh, D1-3 uh, cam lock chuck, but as I was doing that I felt it twitching a little bit. Uh, now one of the things I have learned is to listen to the little voice inside. Down here is a mount that uh, I made up at some stage, a cam lock mount for precisely this reason, uh, and I'm just holding that down there so it's, it's actually secure. It's a bit of a pain because when I want to change the thing I've got to undo it all, shake it off and, and, and change it over, but that's the way it works. Uh, I have ignored the little voice in the past and disaster has ensued. So these days when the little voice says, suggests something isn't quite right, I stop and um, think about it and it's a, it's a good habit to get into. Anyway, so that's the, that's the quarter inch uh, block done. So I've just um, basically drilled the, the 9mm clearance hole in from the back and I've drilled the, uh, the necessary hole for the, for the broaching in from the front and I'll now um, take that over to the press and broach that square hole. On this one, the, the, the uh, 3 16 one, I can put my 3 16 uh, hole in from uh, let's see, that'll be the front there. I can put that in from the front and I just need to go back, oh, I don't know, 25 millimetres or so. Uh, the rest of that'll get machined away so it doesn't matter. This is the 3 uh, 3 16 version of the cutter. So what I've done here is instead of, uh, as with the quarter inch version, drilling in and then milling away. I've milled away and then I've put a trench in with a, uh, a quarter inch cutter. Now I get to deburr all this and file that hole out square. This is the quarter inch version. Um, just off the mill I've, I've taken a couple of the, the, the burrs off just to have a look, better look at it. Um, so the advantage here is of course that square hole is, is there and if I use a, a square piece of tool steel in here picking the bird end it goes in quite nicely the problem is down here the the brooch was running offline um, and what's happened is that it's it scratched the surface there it hasn't taken the material out because there was nothing holding it on this side so I may have to get the um, the cutter out that I had before and just relieve those corners there you can see just this there's a, just a slight witness line there too just to give myself a little bit of um, clearance there so that can slide in and out. So just a bit of an update, um, I've been filing away at the, uh, the 3 16th holder for, uh, for some time now, it's slow going. These needs, needle files are not very coarse, they, they're sharp but they're very fine um, and so it's slow going taking away the, the material. Um, usually I'm using a, a square file but every so often I'll swap to a triangular just to try and make sure I, I, I don't have the, the thing hanging up in the corners. Um, but uh, it's getting there, it's, it's a, it's a squarish shape. After a fair bit of filing, uh, I've finally got my uh, hole good enough. The length there is basically four times the, uh, the width of the, 
uh, the tool steel and these holes are tapped um, a tool steel width in from either end so in one tool steel, two tool steels, one tool steel uh, and that's the same for the uh, the quarter inch uh, version as well. I did end up moving this one down just a smidge so I had a little bit more material there for the um, the grub screws to, to hold on. Um, I went back and, and just put a, a light machine in that corner there and that now uh, slides through there quite nicely so that's all good. The next thing on here is to put a bit of relief on the corners there and there. There's the finished result. Two holders, one for quarter inch and one for three sixteenth. Uh, the, the relief I've put on there if anybody's interested, I've just stepped back two millimetres from the edge of the, the hole there and, and sliced that off. Um, that's really all it needs. If you if you really push for space, you might want to you know crib a little bit off that. Uh, I'd be a millimetre or two, but uh, that's uh, that's what it is. But uh, I hope that's uh, been useful. And uh, any other questions, please uh, pop them in the comments, and uh, I'll I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but uh, you know, thanks for uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please share and uh, catch you next time.